the nodal ninja panorama head. The reason you'd use a panorama head is because when you go to stitch your images together, it's going to make it so much more seamless. Once you've, you've shot your panoramas with the nodal ninja, turning it on the no parallax point, and you go to stitch it, and you see the ease and simplicity of everything lining up the foreground and background, you won't go back. So let me just show you how to assemble the nodal ninja, then I'll give a demonstration of what the no parallax point is, and then I'll show you in the software exactly how to stitch those together with simplicity and ease. Okay, check it out. First off, we're going to start with a panorama. It's called a leveling tripod. It's a panorama tripod. And the leveling tripod, the wonderful thing about it is normally to adjust your, your platform level on uneven ground, because we're on the ocean, we're on the beach, we're in rocks, wherever we're at, you, you would have to be adjusting your legs in and out. This one is this one flip lever and your whole center ball easily levels. I mean, you level the thing in about 10 seconds. Next thing we're going to do is we have a 16 rotator. Okay, the rotator, what it does is there is degree marking holes here. And it, corresponding to those degree holes are machined little divots in there. And what you do is you take one of these ball bearings. This is a little screw with a springed ball bearing. And when you screw it into that hole, when you turn this, it has indents or clicks. So it's super easy to get a perfect overlap of 30% by turning the head and feeling the indents. We're going to take the 16 rotator, we're going to screw it to our panorama head. We're then going to take our bottom, bottom plate and we're going to take our upper plate. Okay, we're going to take and mount those together. Tighten that down. We're then going to take and mount that to our 16 rotator. Then we're going to take our upper plate. The upper plate, this is what allows you to hold the camera in a vertical orientation. When you're doing horizontal panoramas, you want as many pixels as you can from top and bottom for higher resolution. So we hold the camera in a vertical or portrait orientation. Um, I always turn it with it on this side, so I'm going to put it over here. Okay, now let's go ahead and mount the camera. I'm going to mount the uh, Hasselblad H4D. I've already uh, mounted a plate, the Nodal Ninja plate, to the bottom that corresponds with a quick release. So I mount that to the quick release. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do two adjustments. First off, the advantage of the panoramic head is that the head, you can move the camera forward or back and adjust it for it turns right on the no parallax point. A no parallax point is the, one of the easiest ways to explain that is if you close one eye and hold the finger up and notice what the finger lines up with the background and then close the other eye and open the other eye and notice that the finger lines up with something different in the background. The camera, if it's not turning on the no parallax point, the same thing will happen. As you know, when we shoot our panoramic pictures, we overlap everything by 30%. Of this foreground and background, as you do your overlap, the series when you're on your right going to the left, what, what's going to happen is the foreground is going to line up with something different in, the, in the, each succeeding shot. By turning on the no parallax point, there's no shift between the foreground and background, and I'll show you that adjustment in a moment so it makes a little more sense. Usually the, usually the uh, no parallax point is about where, the, where the, uh, the iris or the aperture is in the lens. And if you stop the lens down, you can see it in the lens. It's usually about in this area, but I'm going to show you how to make that exact adjustment. Our first adjustment we want to do is we want, we want the very center of the panoramic head, we want it to be the center of the lens. So I'm going to do that by turning this straight up and down. And then I'm going to take and lower this rail as low as I can get it. I'm going to extend that lens out as far as I can get it. And then what I'm doing is this, this line here and this quick release knob is the center of where it's turning. And it looks like the camera has to move this direction. It has to move that direction. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I just undo this bottom quick release and move that till that camp till the exact center of this lens, okay, is centered to this. Okay? Then I'm going to put the camera back into its standard position. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and move this camera forward and re backwards and I'm going to take and set up a piece of tape on a on a glass window. I'm going to put a piece of tape on a glass window. I'm going to frame it so I see it in the left side of the frame. Notice what the background lines up with. 
then turn it for it lines up with the right side of the frame and notice what the background lines up with and then move this farther and closer in order to eliminate any shift from the foreground to background when I turn my lens from right to left. Let me show you. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to set up and find your no parallax point in your lens by moving your upper rail back and forth, forward and backwards. I'm going to take and put this tape on a window, a window that's, you know, as close as the foreground, when you shoot your panoramas, as close as the foreground ever would be, that's how close you need to be to the window. And then you have something in infinity, okay? You want it something as far away as possible. And right now I can see trees that are probably around 300 yards away, almost to infinity. What I'm going to do is put a piece of tape on the window. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through the viewfinder and I'm going to line that, I'm going to line it up. I'll show you the image here. I'm going to line that piece of tape up with something in the background when it's in the left side of the frame. And then I'm going to turn the camera for it's at the right side of the frame and notice if there's any shift of the background in relationship to the edge of the tape. Right now, I'm going to shot, I'm going to shoot right now. They are not lined up, so I shot one shot each way so I can actually show you that alignment. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this, I'm going to slide this back. I already know for a fact that this red line is really close to where the no parallax point is in the Canon. So I'm going to go and adjust that back to the red line over the center. Now I'm going to go and view that again. And now that's way closer, but it's still off. Right now the tape, when I'm on the right side, when I'm on the left side, the tape moves to the right. When I'm on the right side, the tape moves to the left. Now I'm going to take and move this a little bit forward. Take a look again. Now I have no movement at all between the background and the foreground. Okay, so there, here's examples. I'll show you examples of what that look is like now, okay? The next thing that I'm going to show you how to adjust and set up is how many degree overlap. Where do you put these little indent and knobs when you're doing your stitches? What you want to have happen is you want a 30% overlap. So what you do is you turn this, turn my zero indent to zero degrees on the head. I look into the viewfinder and then I turn it to the right where there's a 30% overlap and I look at the degrees. And right now, this particular lens set on 70 millimeter lines up at 15 degrees. So I would take one of these, I would take one of these little bearings, it's a ball bearing with the spring in it, and I would put, screw that into 15 degrees. And then there's an indent. This thing has an indent that stops every 15 degrees. So that makes it super easy to shoot a panorama without ever thinking about if you have the right overlap. So that's like a key thing to actually align that up, see what degree that is, and adjust that ball bearing to do that. Okay, well, so now let's go out in the field. Let's go shoot some. Come on! Come on! Let's go shoot some!